Hey everybody, Al Puglisi, Al Puglisi Trains. You know, I get asked a lot on a lot of railroad videos I make, how does he keep the railroad room free of dust? How does he control the dust? How does he keep the dust away? Or how do you keep the dust away? What's best practice? Well, I'm not going to say that my way is the only way. I'm not going to tell you that my way is the best way. I'm just going to tell you what I do to control dust. Now, if you're beginning to build a model railroad and you're going to prep a railroad room, there are some things that are obvious that you want to do to help prevent dust from the very beginning before you even build your railroad. Let me show you. Well, folks, in my case, my railroad is about 23 by 32 feet. And in my case, when I moved in my house, I had a nice drop ceiling. So I did not have an open ceiling. Now, if you have an open ceiling, a tremendous amount of dust can mitigate from an open ceiling. So if you're able to put in a drop ceiling or if you're able to put in a drywall ceiling, it makes a tremendous difference. Another thing that makes a huge difference in a model railroad room is the floor. Now, this has carpet. Now, some people say carpet's a terrible idea. Well, I didn't want to rip out the carpet in the railroad room. But what you don't want in a railroad room is you do not want a bare concrete floor. If you have a bare concrete floor, it will migrate dust like there's no tomorrow. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Well, it's a no-brainer, perfect example. This, this big garage will one day eventually become an addition room for an O-scale layout. One of the things I'm going to do, obviously, I, there is a ceiling already put in drywall, but I will put some type of paint, treatment, or covering of some kind on this concrete floor to prevent dust mitigation coming up from the floor. This is another large room of our house. I just went to Home Depot and bought a simulated rollout linoleum wood. They sell this stuff in like 12 foot wide sheets and you buy it by the foot and you cut it to fit the room and roll it out. And within, uh, took us 25 minutes to make this room like it's got wall to wall flooring. And this is better than nothing. If you want to paint the floor, if you want to treat the floor, if you want to put a carpet down. Now, carpet does have a tendency to hold more dust and cause problems, but you need some kind of covering on the floor. So let's go into some other tips. Your home furnace is very important. I know that may sound stupid. I know that may sound like common sense, but if you have the capability to upgrade your air purification system in your furnace, if you have the ability to do something, whether it be a electrostatic air filtration system, or in my case, I have a gigantic fuel air element inside here, and I change it regularly. I change it at least three times a year. I don't change it once a year. I change it frequently. Let me show it to you. This is a large element and uh, you can see it's beginning to pick up dust and dirt and it is imperative that as part of your maintenance in your home that you keep your filters changed on a regular basis. That helps tremendously with the mitigation of dust not only in the rest of your house but definitely in your model railroad room. Now if you have carpet like I have uh, a very common sense tip is it is imperative that you keep the carpet vacuumed. I vacuum this carpet after every single visit. I'm anal about it. I'll come down here and I'll vacuum the carpet once a week because uh, a lot of dust, a lot of mitigated stuff gets in the carpet and vacuuming the carpet does a huge, huge step in improving and keeping dust down in the room. Now another common sense tip I'll share, you, share with you is don't, if you can help it, don't do any cutting, don't do any sawing, don't do any work in the train room. If you're sanding a piece of wood, if you're sanding something, take it into the workshop. Get it the hell out of the railroad room. 
I've seen folks rip things apart and sand and cut and do things in the model railroad room, kicking up an enormous amount of dust. Now, sometimes you don't have um, the option of working outside the model railroad room. Sometimes you need to cut something apart or change something or do something. And in that case, I would recommend covering part of the layout with a very, very thin painter's plastic cloth or at least put up a wall duct taped to the ceiling where you can mitigate and keep the dust in one section of the room. Also, if you're using a, a, a sanding or a cutter of some reason, let's say you had to cut some of these rock castings out, for example, I would always have a vacuum cleaner handy to be right behind me, a friend, would be right behind me with a big shop vac vacuuming as I work to pull up the dust. Let me show you that in just a little while. I've got my vacuum here, but before I do that, I want to show you a few other things. I run air purifiers in my model railroad room. I run the air purifiers 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, sometimes I will turn them off after three or four days and maybe give them a break for a day or two and then I'll kick them back on but what's interesting is on this particular brand and I'm not endorsing any particular brand one over the other I got these from Costco this was a uh, it's not made in China it's made in Korea and uh, it's an excellent air filter air purifier and if this light this plasma wave light is red or orange that means that there's contaminant in the air and it's working to clear the air and when it turns blue the air is clean in this area and what I'll do is I'll put an air purifier I have two of them for this layout I have a large section of the layout here that you see this is half the layout again it's about a 25 by 32 foot layout and I'll run the air purifier in one section and I'll let it run say all day um, and I'll leave for work, I'll position it, and when I come home in the evening before I go to bed, I'll simply come down to the air purifier, and I'll grab it, and I'll move it back some to another spot. Oh, I don't know, maybe halfway through the room there, so it has a, a new area, and I'll let it sit overnight, and then the next morning, I'll grab it, and I'll move it again, just like I'm showing you, to another corner, of the layout room where it can do additional work in an additional area and I will literally day after day in the morning and evening reposition that air purifier in different spots all along the railroad and I'll work my way all the way around and all the way to the back end placing the air filter in different sections every day in the morning and in the evening to run maybe five or six feet apart and I have another air purifier on the other side of the layout that also runs and I do the exact same thing with it I will move it six feet down closer to me just like the other one and eventually as I work my way down this 20 foot aisle eventually this air purifier same brand as the other one as it does other areas of the layout I'll move it over here about five or six feet over so it has a new area that it can purify and eventually that air purifier will make its way all the way across both air purifiers a meet in this half of the room and then I'll simply reverse the process and move the air purifiers back I will tell you it makes an amazing difference when you walk in the room the smell of the fresh air the air movement it's it's dramatic uh, a lot of times I'll say well you know I can turn the air purifiers off I don't need to run them for a week or two and I'll forget and I might leave them off for two weeks and when I run them again after I haven't run them for a week or two and I run them again I notice immediately the next day when I come down into the railroad room that the 
freshness of the air is dramatically better. I can feel the air moving in the room. And it's that movement of air and that purification of air that's helped me keep a lot of this dust under control. Now, I'm really not going to recommend what brand air purifiers to buy. If you leave a comment, what do you recommend? Um, I, I really don't want to get into that. You can read consumer reports. You can read Google reviews. But what I look for in an air purifier is the following. I like having a two-stage filter. I like having some type of charcoal filter that is cheap and you can buy. And I like having a big filter element. And it's very, very important that you look online and you find out how much it costs to buy replacement air filters and charcoal strips. Because in some cases, the price of the air filter and the price of the car charcoal strips one or two air filters will, in some cases, exceed what you paid for the air purifier. It's ridiculous. Now, I got online and found discount air purifiers that, air purifier filters, I should say, that work for this particular unit, and I can buy them at a nominal price, and it keeps the cost down. And I like these units from Costco because, again, they purify the air. They have the HEPA filtration to take some contaminant out of the air, and they have a charcoal filtration, which takes odors out of the air, and you can simply clean. These things get incredibly dirty. You can vacuum the screens. You can vacuum the charcoal air filter first stage, and these particular air filters are really difficult to clean. When they get dirty, this one's ready to be, just about ready to be replaced. You can see that they're getting dirty. Simply discard it and get a new one. These can be vacuumed periodically, but after uh, a few months of vacuuming these, uh, it's best to replace these. Uh, use the manufacturer recommendation for replacement. This may seem a little ridiculous to talk about, and it, you might say, well, this is common sense, but I've seen a lot of people not exercise common sense. First of all, you got to make absolutely sure whatever vacuum you're using has got a clean filter, and I mean clean. If that filter's dirty on the back end of that vacuum, kicking out of the exhaust will be a tremendous amount of soot and dust, and all that's going to do is kick up more dust in the railroad room, not less dust. Now, when I vacuum um, a layout, let's say the top of these skyscrapers get dusty, and I want to clean the top of these skyscrapers. Now, I use these makeup brushes. Now, you can raid your wife's supply of soft makeup brushes. These are super, super soft. Some of the makeup brushes are much larger. There's even bigger, puffier makeup brushes than this, but you can go to any Walmart or any beauty store and buy these super soft, puffy makeup brushes. And you can simply go to the roof and you can simply dust. You can see the amount of dust coming off. Now, you, I, to me, it's ridiculous to sit there and dust with all that soot coming off because all you're doing is you're moving the soot from one place to another. So you're going to need to have both hands free. And since I don't have, I'm the cameraman tonight, I don't have somebody to help me. Essentially what you would do or what I would do is in one hand, I would have my vacuum handy. And in the other hand, I'd be brushing and I have the vacuum on and I suck up the dust as I brush. And I do it very carefully as to not suck away cars, as to not suck away people. But if you keep a, a small vacuum like this an inch or two away and you go to dust the top of the skyscraper, for example, or the top of the building, and you hold the vacuum close to what you're brushing, and the brush grabs the, the dust and moves it, and the vacuum vacuums it up as you're brushing, so you're actually removing the dust. You're not moving it from one place to another. It's kind of common sense. But again, I've seen a lot of people 
um, use vacuum cleaners that did not have clean filters. And on the back end of the vacuum, you can see dust coming out. So obviously you want to use really clean filters. I scan rooftops on vehicles. I scan rooftops on structures. I scan the rooftops of my rolling stock and passenger cars and engines. And if I see dust, I vacuum and I dust. How often do I have to do that? Sometimes I have to do it uh, every couple months. Sometimes I can get, get away with not doing it for three or four months. Call me crazy, but a lot of times when I run trains or have an op session, I'll have my handy makeup brush in my back pocket and I'll whip out that brush. And as the train is going down the track, I'll literally let the train move right across the brush and actually gently brush off the locomotives. Again, these, these particular brushes will not harm even the most delicate of paints. And I will simply keep the tops of passenger cars dusted, particularly black top passenger cars. They show dust quite frequently. And I'll go through and I'll just simply, when the train is moving, I'll do this and just keep the brush here and just let the train go by and clean. Or when the train is stopped, I might brush. If the dust is thick, I will use the vacuum to capture the residue dust. Dusting locomotives. Again, just keeping them dusted. If you don't keep them dusted and dust builds up, they're harder to clean than if you simply dust. Now, I like to dust the coal loads quite frequently because they hold dust quite a bit. And once they get really dusty, they're a little more challenging to dust. Now, I'll monitor the tops of my vehicles. If the tops of my vehicles aren't dusty, then I won't dust them. If they are dusty, I will dust them. This one, as you can see, is a black one, dark blue, and it needed a little bit of a dusting. Again, if the dust is really thick, I will have the vacuum handy behind me to suck up that dust. But if it's just a little minute amount of dust, then I will simply do this with the cars. It doesn't take long, and uh, I dust all my cars. I dust my rolling stock, I dust uh, the shingled structures, oftentimes with the vacuum next to me. I'll dust the roofs. It can be a lot of work, but the end result is this layout is started construction at the house here back in 97. And people comment and say, wow, it looks so fresh and dust free. And it's really because I just keep on top of it, dusting off large surfaces and vacuuming, making sure I don't have a lot of clutter in the railroad room, making sure that when people come into my railroad room, their feet are clean, they wipe off their feet, they don't track dirt in. I vacuum the carpeting every time they come in. I keep it clean. I don't have clutter all over my railroad room. I keep as much trash and clutter out of this room as I possibly can because that makes a huge difference in mitigating dust. I guess to end the video, I'll show you a kind of a crude way that I keep all my coal loads looking brand new and undusty. Because to me, there should be a little bit of shininess in a coal load, and nothing's worse than having coal loads on the layout that are dust caked and dusty, and some folks might say, well, I like that dust and I want the dustiness. And hey, if that's what you want, that's great. What I'll do is you can take the brush and dust, but I typically will go down and I will literally blow, uh, in other words, with my cheeks. I'll get down next to the car and whoo, 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 literally blow each car off and blow the dust off. I'll show you. Take one off the track here. I'll simply bring it up. <laughs> blow the top of the coal load off. Put the car back down on the track. Do the next car. 
Sometimes I'll just go along and uh, use uh, compressed air or just my lungs and just uh, get down real close and blow off the lids of each one of these coal loads. And I do that about once every couple months and I keep all my coal loads clean. Folks, I hope this was helpful to you. If you like what you see on the channel, please, please hit the subscribe button. It helps us greatly push out these videos on YouTube. And thanks for watching the channel.